All right, here we have an Atari 800XL, which has had Ultimate Atari Video fitted to it, UAV as you would know it, and somehow the video quality is actually worse than it would be. Uh, this is an Atari 800XL, and it's had Ultimate Atari Video, better known as UAV, installed, and somehow the video looks worse than a stock 800XL. How can this be possible? Uh, let's have a look and find out. Now the video quality should be really really good. It should be impeccably good in fact. Um, but the video quality as you can see is pretty poor. It's got a kind of a zigzag line effect going down it. And uh, this is over S video by the way. This is using my own cable. And I did try the cable that was uh, supplied by the owner as well. And it's pretty much the same story. Yeah, the, the Yona supplied a composite cable. Um, and that doesn't really look any better. So I think we're going to have to open the machine up and figure out what's wrong with it. All right, so let's take this machine apart. Oh, here we are, the uh, shield is already gone on this machine, so we can see inside. Here is our UAV device. Um, so what I think I'm going to need to do is, first thing I'm going to check is the jumper configuration on here, uh, just to make sure that it's correct, because um, every machine, every Atari machine, uses uh, different gates of the CD4050 uh, for different purposes. Uh, so hence, uh, and there's a CD4050 on this board, uh, so hence we have uh, jumper settings for each different uh, model of machine that you want to put the board in. So I think the first thing we should do is verify that they're correct. So there's some kind of nasty looking soldering here, <clears throat> but I think this is all going to a ground tab here, I'm fairly sure. Um, so the fact these resistors here all lead to a common ground shouldn't be a problem at all, so... That should be okay, and the I'm assuming this is the chroma output, I think it is, uh, which is running over to the unused pin of the jack, so that should be fine. So I think what we need to do is download the uh, graphic which shows uh, the correct um, arrangement for these jumpers, because uh, every machine which used the CD4050 had the used the gates for the luminosity in a, a different um, arrangement. That's why we have these jumpers here, and it's very important that you get them right. Um, I don't know if they're wrong yet, but I can't remember offhand what they should be like, so let's go and check to make sure that they are. So here's a couple of photos of the uh, 800XL UAV installation, Revision D specifically, that I downloaded from the Atari Age uh, forums, and the jumpers uh, turn out to be in the correct positions uh, after all. So we can discount them as the source of the problem. Right, let's check that we've got continuity across all the connections here. I'll put the meter in diode mode and that one's fine, that one's fine, that one's fine. Now this one take the colour, that one looks okay too. So I'm going to remove this tremendous gob of solder here uh, that's completely just buried these resistors uh, regardless of whether or not it's technically correct or not because uh, it's a heck of a mess. It's this weird solder as well, it doesn't seem to shift. Oh, it's just absolutely horrendous. Probably lead free stuff. So I'll add a bit of 6040. If I can get this stuff off here. Uh, we can just 
just about see the board now. Yes, that's, that's more or less close enough. Uh, let's remove some of this um, solder residue at the bottom here where the ground wire is connected, which uh, is yeah, not really needed anyway because the, the device is already grounded on the socket. So I think we should be okay. This, this solder is very weird stuff. It must be uh, some sort of alloy. It's just not shifting. So if you can't get this stuff off, add some uh, lead solder and it will soak up. Mix the two together and it will soak up quite nicely into your wick. There we go. That's better. Okay, so let's try this again. So let's put the colour wire back on. Let's try it again. So having eliminated the impossible, whatever remained had to be the case. So I came full circle back to questioning the wiring, uh, not the integrity of the wiring, not the signal integrity, but the actual pinout itself on the terminal block. Specifically, I began to wonder if the composite video and the Luma signals had got mixed up. And when I swapped them around, that turned out to be exactly what had happened. And uh, having corrected that problem, I finally got a picture. Okay, so it appears that the composite video and Luma were actually swapped at the terminal block here. So I've switched them around. So let's turn it on and have a look what we've got now. Okay, here goes. All right, so that's what we've got now. And as you can see, it's night and day to what we had before. So the problem was really uh, very simple, switching of two wires, uh, which uh, doesn't make for the most interesting video, but uh, well, there it is. And I think this is a fairly common problem when installing these things because the information regarding uh, wiring and jumper settings isn't really uh, stored anywhere centralized. Uh, I can never remember, I keep forgetting to save the pictures and stuff, so I, when I have one to install I end up hunting around the Atari Age forum trying to find the links uh, that show the jumper configuration. But the jumper configuration, as far as I can remember, was initially uh, okay. The main problem was that these two wires were switched, and there is one photograph on Atari Age which shows uh, the position of these uh, two wires here. But the way they crisscross in the picture, it's so easy to get them mixed up. Um, and I think that's probably what happened here. So I'll go away and clean up the soldering a bit. These two wires here, they're kind of tacked onto the to the vias there. I think we can we can poke those wires through the vias properly there and just generally tidy things up. And uh, well, that's really all there is to it, I'm afraid. So it's nice to get an easy one now and again, but uh, yeah, made for a bit of a short video, so... Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, so uh, although it's a comparatively simple device to fit, it's easy to make some kind of mistake. Make sure you've got the jumpers configured correctly, which I think they were in this case, and double check, triple check these wires here, because if you get them mixed up, uh, and I probably should have recognized the symptom anyway of if you get any kind of color leakage on the Luma input, which appeared to be what was going on here, or you get that zigzag effect. Of course, composite video carries colour information as well, uh, so you get all that nasty noise. I haven't had a lot of time to make videos uh, over the past few weeks or do much of anything, um, unfortunately, for various reasons. Um, and I just want to thank everyone who uh, has subscribed to the channel or commented below the videos. Of course, your comments are always welcome. We're getting near to a thousand subscribers here and I get some really really lovely comments from people who've uh, just observed a, a bit of an upturn in quality since I started making the edited content so uh, thank you again uh, I've got a couple of ideas for what should be some really good videos coming up and if I get the time hopefully I'll get into them over the next week or so and uh, until then thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video